what is a relational GBMS? Well, um, if you look online or look at some of the books that are out there or some of the papers, you'll find the most enormous amount of nonsense spouted in answer to this question. I could fill many pages deconstructing some of the answers you can find to that question in the literature. In fact, I have uh, elsewhere. But be that as it may, the right answer is really quite straightforward, but sadly doesn't appear to be very widely understood. So what is a relational DBMS? Well, it's a DBMS. Oh, yes, it's a DBMS. It's not a database. We, we are really, really bad at terminology in our field. I don't know why it is, but people repeatedly use the word database to mean a DBMS. Well, one trouble with that is, if you call the DBMS a database, what do you call the database? Obviously, there's huge scope for confusion if you go down that path, so I'm not going to. A DBMS is a DBMS, a database is a database. So a relational DBMS is a DBMS. So it gives us all the usual DBMS stuff. It gives you data storage, it gives you query, update, recovery and concurrency, security and integrity, and all those good things. But it's also relational, which means that the user interface is based on the relational model. Or a better way to say that is, it's a faithful implementation of the relational model. Which means, as far as the user is concerned, two things. First, the data looks relational. Second, relational operators such as join are available to operate on that data. Oh, by the way, that word user, um, in this seminar, when I take the word user, I'll take it to mean either an interactive user or an application programming user, or sometimes both, whatever the context demands at the time. So anyway, as far as the user is concerned, the data looks relational and relational operators are available. Let me now elaborate on both those two points. First, the data looks rela relational. There's something in the relational world, you've probably heard of this, it's called the information principle. And what it says is, everything is relations. At any given time, the entire information content of the database is represented as far as the user is concerned in one and only one way, namely as relations. Now, down on the disk, there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's hashing, there's indexes, there's pointer chains and things like that, compression and so on. But that's all under the covers. As far as the user is concerned at the user interface, what you see is relations and nothing but relations. Or another way to say the same thing is that the only kind of variable that we allow within a relational database, as far as the user is concerned, is specifically the relation variable. And I'll explain what that means in just a moment. So for example, here is a picture of a relational database. Now, this, of course, is the famous suppliers and parts database. I'm sure you didn't expect to see any presentation from me without getting to see the suppliers and parts database sooner or later. We're going to be using this one as a basis for a lot of examples. So actually I recommend um, when you have a moment and um, print off this slide and keep a paper copy available so you can refer to it from time to time as we go on. But anyway, this database has suppliers, that's S, it has parts, that's P, and it has shipments of parts by suppliers, that's SP. So it says, for example, the supplier S1, which is called Smith, is shipping or supplying part P1, which is a nut, in a certain quantity 300. So <clears throat> relational databases have relations in them. I'll give you the formal definition of relational later, but here first are some important points. First, every relation, every relation has a heading. The heading is basically the attribute names, like for suppliers, supplier number, supplier name, status, and city. It's a set of attribute names, or more precisely, it's a set of attribute name type name pairs, because along with every attribute, there's a certain type. But informally, we often overlook or forget about the types. So every relation has a heading, and then it has a body, which is a set of tuples that conform to the heading. So the supplier's relation has a heading, it has a bunch of tuples, a set of tuples, each one of which has a supplier number, a supplier name, a status value and a city value. Second, 
relations never, never, never contain duplicate tuples, right? Because the body of a relation is a set, a mathematical set, and sets in mathematics do not contain duplicate elements. So relation, a relation, to be a relation, does not contain duplicate tuples. If there are duplicate tuples, it's not a relation. Definition. The tuples in the body of a relation have no ordering top to bottom. That again follows because the body of a relation is a set of tuples and sets in mathematics have no ordering. So the set containing ABC and the set containing CAB are the same set. The attributes of a relation have no ordering left to right. That's because the heading of a relation is a set. And again, sets have no ordering. Now, when I draw a relation on paper, I have to put the attributes in a certain left to right sequence because of a limitation of the medium. I have suppliers, I have supplier number, supplier name, status, city, but you should ignore that ordering. It isn't really there. By the same token, the tuples in the body, when I draw a picture of a relation on paper, I have to put the rows in a certain order, but you should ignore that order. It isn't really there. And last, relations are always normalized, or equivalently, they're in what's called first normal form, at least. What that means is, if you look at any intersection point between a tuple and an attribute, you always find exactly one value, no more, no less, and nothing else. 